All right, I'm going to compare two Latin courses and their storytelling capabilities. The Cambridge Latin course in this corner, a powerhouse of storytelling, uh, memorable from my childhood, but is my nostalgia clouding my senses? And the Lingua Latina per se lustrata, well known among adult self-learners as an adult self-learner Latin book, uh, who people say is really well written, but I find extremely unpleasant. But am I wrong? I'm going to settle this with a random battle between two stories, one from each of these series. And to make it a bit fair, I'm going to only compare early stories with early stories, middle stories with middle stories, end stories with end stories. And why am I only, why am I uh, one book versus five? It's because these five really expanded, but they have the same about the same amount of grammar as the one book here and uh, that's because I mean this gets up to like subjunctives gerundives and stuff and this gets up to subjunctives gerundives and stuff but it takes all of these books it takes 158 or so stories whereas this has 37 stories so it's a little bit of an unfair fight this is much more expanded uh, but I'm going to choose one from the first third and I'm doing it completely randomly not uh, I will not be selective in my choice here. So random number from the first third. 16. Which story is number 16? It's in numerical order. It's book one, stage seven. Number two, decans. Stage four. Stage six. Very hard to do left-handed. Stage seven. And we get to decans. I will read the story in Latin and then interpret it aloud for you, just in case you may not be in the same amount of Latin as everyone. Uh, everyone's going to have different levels of Latin, so I'll interpret it for everyone. Decans. Bosquan Felix fabulam narravit, caecilius et hospites plauserunt, tuum omnes tacebant, et aliam fabulam expectabant, subito lamorem audi verunt, omnes ad atrium festina verunt, ubi clemens stabat. Caecilius says, Hercle, quides, cur tu clamorem facis. Clemens, decens, decens. Caecilius, quides. Clemens says, decens es mortus. Omnes, quid, mortus, eheu, duo servi intrant. Caecilius says, quid dicis? Servus primus says, Dominus meus ad villam tuam veniebat, Dominus gladiatorem prope ampiteatrum conspexit. Servus secundus says, gladiator dominum teruit, quod gladium ingentem virbrabat. Dum gladiator clamavit, Tu me non terres, Leo! Tu me non terres! Leones amicum meum in arena necaverunt, se tu me non terres! Severus Primus says, Decens valde timebat, Tu est insanus, inquit Dominus. Ego non sum Leo, sum homo! Severus Secundus says, Gladiator tamen dominum ferrociter petivit, et eum ad ampiteatrum traxit, dominus perteritus clamavit. Clemens clamorem audivit, Clemens quod fortis erat, ampiteatrum intravit, degentem in arena conspexit, dominus meus erat mortus. Caecilius says, ego rem intellego. Gladiator erat pugnax, pugnax erat gladiator notissimus, pugnax olim in arena pugnabat, et leo pugnacem necavit, pugnax non vivit, pugnax est umbra, umbra decentem necavit. All right, I'm going to interpret aloud what happened here just so that everyone knows what's the story. After Felix 
told his story. There was a story, it was a ghost story, I believe, some kind of a fabula mirabilis involving a werewolf. After he told this spooky story, this is the theme of the chapter, Caecilius and the guests applauded. Then everyone was listening and we were waiting for another story. (laughs) Then this becomes a real life thing. Suddenly they heard a shout. Everyone hurried to the atrium where Clemens, that's the slave of Caecilius, was standing. And Caecilius, the master, says, By Hercules, what is it? Why are you making such a shout? Clemens says, Decans. Decans is struggling for words. Caecilius says, What is it? Clemens says, Decans is dead. Everyone says, What? Dead? Oh, oh no. And then two slaves enter. Caecilius says, What are you saying? The first slave says, my master was coming to your your villa, your big house. The my master caught sight of a gladiator near the amphitheater. The second slave says the gladiator terrified my master because he was like brandishing a huge sword. Then the gladiator shouted, "You don't terrify me, O oh lion! You don't terrify me, lions!" Killed my friend in the arena, but you don't terrify me. The first slave says, Deccans was very afraid. You are insane, he said, uh, like the said the master. I'm not a lion. I am a man. The second slave says, the gladiator, however, fiercely attacked our master and dragged him to the amphitheater. Um, our master shouted in terror, Clemens heard the shout. Clemens, because he was brave, entered the amphitheatre. He caught sight of deckhands in the arena. My master was dead. Caigulius says, I understand the thing. The gladiator was Pugnax. Pugnax was a, gladi- was a very famous gladiator. Pugnax once was fighting in the arena and a lion killed Pugnax. Pugnax is not alive. Pungnax is a ghost. A ghost killed Deccans. Uh, so what do we get from this story? Other than the grammar of um, first person, second person, third person, which is very much reinforced by the play format, uh, we get an idea of um, the story becoming real life. Because previously we had a ghost story and now we get a story where an actual ghost kills someone. Uh, there's a kind of terror there of a blurred lines between fabula, the, the, the story that they were waiting for, and reality, their friend actually getting killed by a ghost. Uh, and, that's, uh, and then it gets followed up by some people running home in terror, fearing the, um, the, the, the shades, being, being afraid of a ghost attacking them too. So this, um, I find it to be pretty effective storytelling. It has Clemens say, like, struggling with words, decans, decans. There's the short, there's a contrast between short sentences, quid mortuus eho, and then the longer sentences that are explaining what happened. There is also a very artful use of repetition. The way that the gladiator, the insane gladiator shouts, you don't terrify me, O lion, you don't terrify me. There's a kind of repetition of, like, someone who is obsessed is coming out through there, but it's also a repetition that's reinforcing the language use. And um, Pungnax, the gladiator, uh, that thing, yeah, that one's a sort of, it's a reveal at the end that you didn't expect from the beginning necessarily. Maybe you thought of him as a um, PTSD survivor, but at the end the reveal is actually the whole thing, he was a ghost. He wasn't, he wasn't alive. He was a zombie. Um, so I find that, that that has a surprise in it, which I, I like. I like a lot. But let's see. What will be our first third uh, story from the Latina Lingua series, in the Latina Lingua Familia Romana? Let's see. I'm going to press it now. Number four. That one is... Oh, Libertus Latinus is not really a story. It's just about your book. I don't think that's generous enough to the Lingua Latina series, so I'm going to be honourable and re-roll that. Imperium Romanum. 
the first story where it's just place names. Honestly, that's also not a fair fight. Here, let me be super generous and go to another random number from the first third. Literary enumerate letters and numbers. No, oh, that's that's too unfair as well. Let me go another one. One that's actually going to be good. Let's try number three. That is Familia Romana from the second chapter and an actual story as opposed to Libertus Latinus. I'm trying to be as generous as I can be to this book. Uh, what page was that again? Uh, page 13. Let's read this out loud. Julius, we Romanus est. Aemilia, femina Romana est. Marcus est puer Romanus. Quintus, quoque puer Romanus est. Julia est puella Romana. Marcus et Quintus, non viri, sed pueri sunt. Viri sunt, Julius et medus et tavus. Ecce, Julius... Medus Davus. Uh, where was I? Aemilia et Delia et Syra sunt feminae. Es ne femina Iulia? Non femina. Sed parva puella est Iulia. Iulius, Aemilia, Marcus, Quintus, Iulia, Syra, Davus, Delia Medusque, sunt familia Romana. Iulius pater est. Aemilia est mater. Julius, pater Marci et quinti est. Julius, pater Iuliae quoque est. Aemilia est mater Marci et quinti et Iuliae. Marcus, filius Iulii est. Marcus, filius Aemiliae est. Quintus, quoque filius Iulii et Aemiliae est. Julius, Filia Iuli et Aemiliae. Quis es Marcus? Marcus puer Romanus est. Quis pater Marci est? Iulius pater Marci est. Quae est mater? Quae est mater ma Marci? Mater Marci est Aemilia. Quae est Iulia? Iulia est puella Romana. Quae mater Iulia est? Aemilia mater Iulia est. Pater Iulia est. Iulius. Iulia filia Iulii est. Qui sunt fili Iulii? Fili Iulii sunt Marcus et Quintus. Marcus, Quintus, Iulia, que sunt tres liberi. Liberi sunt fili filiaeque. Marcus et Quintus et Iulia sunt liberi Iulii et Aemiliae. In familia Iulii sunt tres liberi, duo filii et una filia. Est ne medus filius Iulii? Medus filius Iulii non est. Medus est serus Iulii. Iulius dominus medi est. Iulius dominus servi est. Daus quoque servus est. Medus et Daus duo servi sunt. Iulius est dominus medi et Dawi. Iulius dominus servorum est. Et pater liberorum. Es ne Delia filia Aemiliae? Delia non est filia Aemiliae. Delia ancilla Aemiliae est. Aemilia domina Deliae est. Aemilia domina Anchilae est. Syri, uh, Syra quoque Anchila est. Delia et Syra duae Anchilae sunt. Aemilia domina Anchilarum est. Quius servus est Davus? Davus servus Iulii est. Quius Anchila est Syra? Syra est Anchila Aemiliae. Quot liberi sunt in familia? Oh, how many children are there? I'd better interact with this. Marcus Quintus Iulia Tres. Quot liberi sunt in familia? In familia Iulii sunt tres liberi. Quot filii et quot filiae? 
duo fili et una filia. Quod, sunt, uh, quod servi sunt in familia? In familia sunt gentum. Gentum servi. Hec. In familia iuli sunt multi servi. Fauci liberi. Iulius est dominus multorum servorum. Duo et tres numeri sunt. Gentum, quoque numerus est. Numerus servorum est centum. Numerus liberorum est tres. Gentum. Sorry about this, this shine. Gentum est magnus numerus. Tres parvus numerus est. Numerus servorum est magnus. Numerus liberorum parvus est. In familia iuli, magnus numerus servorum, parvus numerus liberorum est. Merus servus graecus est, delia est ancilla graeca. In familia iuli sunt multi servi graeci, multaeco ancillae graecae. Est naimilia femina graeca? Aemilia non est femina graeca, ser romana. Iulius non vir graecus, ser romanus est. Sparta. Okay, suddenly we're in a town. Sparta oppidum graecum est. Sparta, Delphi, Tusculumque, tria oppida sunt. Duo oppida graeca, et unum oppidum romanum. In graecia, et in Italia, Magnus numerus oppidorum est. In Gallia est magnus numerus fluiorum. Lui Galliae magni sunt. Magnine sunt flui Africae. In Africa unus fluvius magnus est. Nilus. Ceteri flui Africae parvi sunt. Sunt ne magnae insulae graecae. Creta et euboia duae insulae magnae sunt, ceterae insulae graecae sunt parvae. Quis es Cornelius? Is that Cornelius? Quis es Cornelius? Cornelius Dominus Romanus est. Iulius et Cornelius duo Domini Romani sunt. Merus non es servus Cornelii, merus servus Iulii est. Cornelius says, Cuius serus est merus? Iulius. Merus serus meus est. Cornelius. Est ne davus serus tuus? Iulius. Davus, quoque serus meus est. Servi mei sunt merus et davus et ceteri multi? Cornelius. Est ne delia ancilla tua? Iulius. Delia est ancilla mea, et sura quoque ancilla mea est. Ancillae meae sunt delia, et sura, et ceterae multae. Familia mea magna est. Cornelius, quod servi sunt in familia tua? Iulius, in familia mea sunt centum servi. Cornelius, quid? Iulius, numerus servorum meorum est centum. Cornelius, centum servi! Magnus est numerus servorum tuorum. And that's our thing. Sorry, I miss, misspoke tuorum. 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 And uh, let's interpret aloud what was happening. I'll go fairly rapidly because it's kind of a bit repetitive. But, I mean, repetition is not too bad. Uh, it's a, it reinforces language. Uh, Julius is a Roman man. Amelia is a Roman woman. Marcus is a Roman boy. Quintus also is a Roman boy. Julia is a Roman girl. Marcus and Quintus are not men, but boys. Men are Julius and Medus and Davos. Amelia and Delia and Syra are women. Is Julia a woman? Not a woman, but a small girl is Julia. Julia is a small girl. Julius, Amelia, Marcus, Quintus, Julius, Syra, Davos, Delia, Medus, uh, and Medus are the Roman familia, family sort of, but includes slaves. Julius is the father. Amulius is the mother. Juli the father, uh, Julius is the father of Marcus and Quintus. 
Julius is the father of Julia as well. Aemilia is the mother of Marcus and Quintus and Julia. Marcus is the son of Julius. Marcus is the son of Aemilia. Quintus is also the son of Julia and Aemilia. Julia is the daughter of Julius and Aemilia. Who is Marcus? Marcus is a Roman boy. Who is the father of Marcus? Julius is the father of Marcus. Who is the mother of Marcus? The mother of Marcus is Amelia. Who is Julia? Julia is a Roman girl. Who is the mother of Julia? Amelia is the mother of Julia. The father of Julia is Julius. Julia is the daughter of Julius. Who are the sons of Julius? The sons of Julius are Marcus and Quintus. Marcus, Quintus and Julia are three children. Children are sons and daughters. Marcus and Quintus and Julia are children of Julia and uh, Julius and Aemilia. In the familia the of the Julius in the familia of Julius are three children, two sons and one daughter. Is Medus a son of Julius? Medus is not a son of Julius. Medus is a slave of Julius. Julius is the master of Medus. Julius is the master of the slave. Darwus also is a slave. Medus and Darwus are two slaves. Julius is the master of Medus and Darwus. Julius is the master of slaves and the father of children. Is Dahlia a daughter of Amelia? Dahlia is not a daughter of Amelia. Dahlia is the slave girl of Amelia. Amelia is the mistress of Dahlia. Uh, Amelia is the mistress of the slave girl. Syra also is a slave girl. Delia and Syria are two slave girls. Amelia is the mistress of slave girls. Whose slave is Dawes? Dawes is a slave of Julius. Whose who's slave girl is Syra? Syra is Amelia's slave girl. How many children are in the family? In the family of Julius, there are three uh, three children. How many children? Uh, how many sons and how many daughters two sons and one daughter how many slaves are in the family in the familia there are a hundred slaves that was my first surprise that's at least there's some surprises in this story in the familia of julius there are many slaves few children julius is the master of many slaves duo and trace uh two and three are numbers a hundred is also a number the number of the slaves is a hundred. The number of children is three. A hundred is a big number. Sorry for the shine again. A hundred is a big number. Three is a small number. The number of slaves is big. The number of children is small. In the family, uh, the familia of um, Julius, is a big number of slaves and a small number of children. Medus is a Greek slave. Dahlia is a Greek slave girl. In the familia of Julius, there are many Greek slaves and many Greek slave girls. Is Aemilia a Greek woman? Aemilia is not a Greek woman, but a Roman woman. Julius is not a Greek man, but a Roman man. Uh, Sparta is a Greek town. Sparta, Delphi, and Tusculum are three towns. Do, uh, do oh, sorry, two Greek towns and one Roman town. In Greece and in Italy, there's a great number of towns. In Gaul, there is a great number of rivers. The rivers of Gaul are big. Are the rivers of are, are the rivers of Africa big? In Africa, there is one big river, the Nile. The other rivers of Africa are small. Are there big islands of Greece? Uh, oh, sorry, Greek island. Are there big Greek islands? Crete and Euboea are two big islands. The rest of the islands of Greece, like the rest of the Greek islands, are small. Who is Cornelius? That guy. Cornelius is a Roman master. Julius and Cornelius are two Roman masters. Medus is not the slave of Cornelius. Medus is the slave of Julius. Cornelius says, whose slave is Medus? Julius says, Medus is my slave. Cornelius says, is Darwus your slave? Julius says, Darwus is also my slave. My slaves are Medus and Darwus and many others. Cornelius says, is Delia your slave girl? Julius says, Delia is my slave girl. And Syrah also is my slave girl. 
my slave girls are Delia and Sura and many others. My familia is big. Cornelia says, how many slaves are in your familia? Julia says, in my familia, there are a hundred slaves. Cornelia says, what? Julia says, the number of my slaves is a hundred. Cornelia says, a hundred slaves? Great is the number of your slaves. All right, let's have a think about what did we get out of this story. We got a lot of reinforcement of the um, singular and plural forms and also of the genitive case. Um, but what I found story-wise is that it was basically taking a family tree. Yeah, they had that family tree here. Or also this family tree in pictures here with the slaves portioned off on this side uh, as appropriate to the cultural context. Um, that this was said in about 20 different sentences. And it was just kind of like, Okay, Marcus is the son of Julius and also the son of Aemilia and also his uh, he and Quintus are sons and Quintus is the son of Julius and Quintus is the son of Aemilia and Julius is the son of De and uh, uh, I hate that. I actually I find it I mean it's fine if you if you like it but I mean I just find it really tiresome like I can only I'm not my brain does not like that kind of activity. I like the activity where you know is meaningful like I, I don't need to say each person individually is the son of this but I don't mind it if it's in a video format when you can see pictures in front of your mind coming up like if you see Marcus next to Julius just that in in isolation and then Marcus next to Emilia yeah okay Marcus is the son of Emilia and then and that's like one at a time I feel like if you if you have that in a kind of more if you have vivid pictures in your mind as you read this, or if you show pictures on the screen as you read this, um, or make pictures, make this into a comic or something, then I think that would be very effective. But um, what happened story-wise, it was we just explained the family tree about a hundred times, and then we got to the slaves and where they come from, and the fact that there are a hundred of them. That's the only real surprise in this. Um, was there any other surprise? Other than that Sparta, suddenly we start talking about Sparta again while talking about the, um, while talking about the family. It's like this, this doesn't connect. I guess maybe because you, we were talking about whether people were coming from Greece or not. And then suddenly we talk about geography of Greece and Africa and Gaul. And then suddenly we go back to some family situation where Cornelius is asking the same question about 10 times. Whose slave is this? Whose slave is that? Whose slave is that? Is that your slave girl? Um, what's my slave girl? Um, yeah, there's just no... Cornelius doesn't really have any motivation in this story. He's not trying to... His friend is not dying. Um, yeah, I mean, I just... I, I find it... it it is a story, dot, 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 and uh, yeah, I mean, you can learn Latin through it, or, and then you can also have like crazy ass ghost stories and like people getting killed by apparitions of gladiators who got killed by the like, lions and stuff in this textbook. So I don't know. Um, which story won out as a story? Uh, we can we can learn Latin through either of the stories, really. But I find that one this time has, in my opinion, a lot more um, the narrative elements, a lot more character motivation uh, than that particular one there. But hey, I can re-roll the dice, maybe do an intermediate story next time. If you like this, uh, if you have anything, if I'm wrong, person on the internet is wrong, then you write a comment, angry comment, saying that I'm wrong. Uh, and I'll sign off here. Walete omnes.